I mentioned last time that one way of understanding the doctrine of the three worlds, the Triloka, which is all of existence, is to understand these three worlds as our inner world, the world of our imagination, thoughts, private feelings, our private inner world. And then there's the external world, the world that we all relate to and talk about and assume is the real world. And then there's our body, which is how the inner world engages with the external world. This is our area of control, our area of direct control over the external world. I don't know what you think about that, but it seems to me a very clear understanding. So clear, actually, it's almost solid. And I might be defeating my own purpose in putting it across, because everything fits into that scheme somehow. I can't think of anything outside that understanding. Everything is either our imagination, our inner world, or out there, the external world, or relating to our sphere of influence, our control, which is the interaction between our inter inner world and the external world. It almost solidifies something. It almost gives reality to the three worlds. It describes it so concretely that we might have a problem getting beyond it. So in chapter 179 we're told all the three worlds are but pure consciousness. They are the unconditioned mind. And we have to look into it. We investigate, we inquire. We inquire into the nature of the external world. We can even do this at a conventional level, look into what the scientists are saying about it, what the physicists say about it. Last time I mentioned what the neuroscientists, or what some neuroscientists are saying about it. We look into the nature of the body, the reality of the body. And this has been covered in the past, in past videos. Our body is notional. And in fact, our inner world, which we describe as insubstantial, our inner world is the world of thoughts, of feelings. This is our reality. But then we think of reality as solid. We think, somehow we think, we pretend that our inner world isn't real. That that's real, what's out there is real. We don't want to get carried away into believing that our thoughts and feelings are reality, do we? The madness that way lies. So we follow the convention of saying our thoughts and our feelings aren't real. What's real is out there. Reality is about earning and living, about survival however you want to approach that and we downgrade our inner reality we downgrade our imagination we start believing our own play acting we start believing that our feelings and our thoughts are not what should be considered our reality they're of the level of imagination of dream that's not real is it? Yes, it is. That is the reality. It's of the nature of dream. So stop pretending. Stop pretending that, that that reality out there is the real reality. Because you know it's not true. You think, well, we have to believe it's true for the sake of society, for the sake of making it into a better world. Okay, that's fair enough. It's a little white lie that you go along with in order to make things better. But let's not forget that it's a white lie. We want to make the world a better place, so we have to believe in the world. 
and take it seriously. Sure, by all means do that. But don't deny your own essential reality. Don't deny your own sense of being. Because what's happening is you're losing sight of your own sense of being. It's getting replaced by anxieties, neurosis, emotional pain. Because you've neglected it. And it's getting harder and harder to find your way back. So much so, you might no longer believe that there's a way back. You're so centered in this play acting, this drama of the world, that you've forgotten your true nature. So we're caught up in this process of cognition, and this is what is meant by ignorance. The elements and the creatures which the ignorant visualize in these worlds do not exist at all. The ignorant cognize. I think cognize would be a better word than visualize. So the elements and the creatures which the ignorant cognize in these worlds do not exist at all. They have as much existence as a dream, as the characters and creatures in a dream. Such being the truth, where is a solid body, etc. Whatever is perceived here is truly non-solid and extremely subtle consciousness. Again, just like a dream. Consciousness alone exists in consciousness. Peace rests in peace. Space exists in space. Wisdom alone exists in wisdom. There's no other reality. This is it. This is it. We have this sense of control. We experience a sensation of resistance. And from this we build all our notions of the body, of solidity. But there's only this experiencing going on. And we can rest in that experiencing. Where is the body and where are the limbs? Where are the internal organs and the skeleton? Where is the brain even? These are all things that are out there. They're all things that we notionalize about our reality. Know that this body is pure consciousness, which is like space, subtle, though it looks solid. And if you really want to experience your body directly, this is what you experience. Some people call it the energy body. If you, want to lie, if you want to sit in meditation or just lie in your bed or sit in a chair even and take your attention to your body, what you experience is subtle energy. And this is a really nice thing to do actually. If you want to do some kind of meditation practice, then tune into this energy body. Eckhart Tolle talks about this exercise in The Power of Now being aware of your energy body. This is your body, that's your real this is your reality. That's what you're aware of. How can you be aware of something solid? You're replacing your experience of the body with your ideas about the body. All these are subtle and there is nothing which is solid. <laughs>